24 hours of the Passion, 10 p.m. hour, second hour of the Agony in the Garden. Preparation before each hour. O my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. Oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my, my will to meditate them. And I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O oh merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wish to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts, your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love and stretching out my arms to hug you I place my head on your heart and I begin oh my sweet Jesus one hour has passed since you came to this garden love assumed primacy in all things making you suffer everything at once Everything the executioners will make you suffer throughout the entire course of your entire passion. Or rather, love makes up for your passion and reaches the point of making you suffer in the most interior recesses of your divine persons, in ways your executioners cannot. O oh my Jesus, I see you now staggering in your steps, and yet you want to walk. Tell me, my love, where do you want to go? Oh, I understand. You see your beloved disciples. I too want to accompany you, so that if you stagger, I may sustain you. Oh, my Jesus, your heart receives another bitter blow. Your disciples are already asleep. And you, who are always compassionate, call them, wake them up, and with complete paternal love admonish them and recommend to them vigilance and prayer. You then return to the garden, but you carry this additional wound in your heart. Oh, my love. In this wound, I see all the wounds inflicted by consecrated souls who, because of temptation, temperament or lack of mortification, instead of clinging to you, being vigilant and praying, give in to their own desires and sleepy, instead of making progress in love and in the union with you, draw back. I unite myself to your passion, O oh, my impassionate beloved. I offer you reparation for all the ingratitude of your most faithful ones. These are the offences which most sadden your adorable heart, and the sorrow they cause you is so great that it makes you delirious. 
O interminable love! Your love, which is already boiling in your veins, conquers everything and forgets everything. I see you prostrate on the ground in prayer, offering yourself up, making reparation and, in everything, trying to glorify the Father for the offences he receives from souls. O oh my Jesus, I too prostrate myself on the ground, and with you I intend to do what you do. O oh Jesus, delight of my heart, I see that crowds upon crowds of all of our sins, miseries, weakness, the most enormous crimes and the gravest ingratitude advance toward you, assail you, crush you, wound you and pierce you. And what do you do? The blood that boils in your veins faces all of these offences, bursts your veins, pours out in large rivulets and drenches you. Your blood flows to the ground and you offer it up in exchange for all offences. You exchange life for death. Ah, love, you have been reduced to such a sorrowful state. You are about to breathe your last. Oh, my love, my sweet life, oh, please, do not die. Raise your face from the ground which you wet with your most sacred blood. Come into my arms. Let me die in your place. But I hear the trembling and dying voice of my sweet Jesus that says, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. It is now the second time I hear this from you, sweet Jesus. What is it you wish to make me understand with this expression? Father, it is, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. O oh, Jesus, all the rebellions of souls advance toward you. You see that... Fiat voluntas tua, that is, your will be done, which was to be the life of each creature, being rejected by almost all of them, and, instead of finding life, they find death. And wanting to give life to all, and to offer solemn reparation to the Father for the rebelliousness of souls, as many as three times, you repeat, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me, that is, the chalice of souls who, by withdrawing from our will, are lost. Although this chalice of mine is extremely bitter, I repeat, not my will, but your will be done. But while you say this, your agonies your agony is so intense and overwhelming that you reach the point of death. You agonize and are about to breathe your last. O oh Jesus, my love, since you are in my arms, I too want to unite myself to your passion. I want to offer you reparation and partake in your passion on account of all the faults and sins committed against your most holy will. I entreat you, See to it that I always do your most holy will. May your will be my breath and my air. May your will be my heart and my heartbeats, my thoughts, my life and my death. But please do not die. Where shall I go without you? 
To whom shall I turn? Who will help me? It will spell the end of me. Oh, please, do not leave me. Keep me in whatever condition you wish, as you see fit, but keep me with you, always with you. May it never happen that I be separated from you, not even for an instant. Rather, let me comfort you, offer you reparation and share in your passion on behalf of all. As I see that all sins of every kind weigh upon you. Therefore, my love, I kiss your most sacred head. And what do I see? I see all the evil thoughts approach you and you experience their repugnance. Each evil thought is a thorn that bitterly pierces your most sacred head. Oh, the crown of thorns the Jews will place on you cannot compare to those thorns. How many crowns of thorns formed by the evil thoughts of souls are thrust on your adorable head, thus causing your blood to pour out everywhere, issuing from your forehead and flowing over your hair? Jesus, I unite myself to your passion and intend to place upon you as many crowns of glory as there are evil thoughts. And to comfort you, I offer you all the angelic intelligences and your own intelligence to give you an act of compassion and reparation for all. O oh Jesus, I kiss your sorrowful eyes and in them I see all the evil gazes of souls that make tears and blood pour out over your face. I unite myself to your passion and intend to comfort your sight by placing before you all the consolations of heaven and earth forged by a union of love with you. Jesus, my love, I kiss your most sacred ears, and what do I hear? I hear in them the echo of horrendous blasphemies, shouts of revenge and malicious gossip. There is not one voice that does not resound in your most chaste hearing. O oh, insatiable love, I unite myself to your passion and intend to comfort you by making resound in your ears all the harmonies of heaven, the sweetest voice of our dear mother and the ardent accents of Magdalene and all loving souls. Jesus, my life, I wish to impress a more fervent kiss upon your face whose beauty has no equal. Oh, this is the face on which the angels, like cupids, desire to fix their gaze for the great beauty that enraptures them. Yet, souls sully it with spit, beat it with slaps and stomp on you. My love, what arrogance! I would like to shout so loudly as to put them to flight. I unite myself to your passion and to offer you reparation for these insults. I go to the most holy trinity to ask for the kiss of the Father and of the Holy Spirit and the divine caresses of their creative hands. I also go to our Heavenly Mother, so that she may give me her kisses, the caresses of her maternal hands and her profound adorations. I offer you everything to make reparation for the offences made to your most sacred face. Beloved Jesus, 
goodness itself. I kiss your most sacred mouth, embittered from horrible blasphemies, from the nausea of drunkenness and gluttony, from obscene conversations, from prayers poorly recited, from evil teachings and from all the evil man does with his tongue. Jesus, I unite myself to your passion and intend to sweeten your mouth by offering you all the angelic praises and the good use of the tongue made by many holy Christians. Jesus, my oppressed love, I kiss your neck and I see it loaded down with ropes and chains on account of the attachments and sins of souls. I unite myself to your passion and I offer you the indissoluble union of the divine persons. Fusing myself in this union, I extend my arms to you and, in forming a sweet chain of love around your neck, I wish to remove the ropes of these attachments that almost suffocate you and to comfort you I press you tightly to my heart. Divine Fortress, I kiss your most sacred shoulders. I see them lacerated and your flesh almost torn to pieces by the scandals and the evil examples of souls. I unite myself to your passion and to comfort you, I offer you the most holy examples of your life, the examples of our Holy Queen Mother and those of all the saints, and letting my kisses flow over each one of your wounds, O my Jesus, I desire to enclose in them souls who, on account of scandals, have been snatched from your heart, and so rejoin the flesh of your most sacred humanity. My labored Jesus, I kiss your bosom, which I see wounded from the insepidness, lukewarmness, lack of correspondence and ingratitude of souls. I unite myself to your passion and, to offer you comfort, I offer you the reciprocal love of the Father and the Holy Spirit, the perfect correspondence of the three divine persons. And immersing myself in your love, O oh my Jesus, I intend to shelter you and shield you from the new blows that souls direct against you with their sins. I take your love and intend to wound them with it so that they may never again dare to offend you and I pour it out over your bosom to comfort and heal you. Beloved Jesus, I kiss your creative hands. I see all the evil actions of souls which, like many nails, pierce your most sacred hands. You remain pierced, not with three nails, as on the cross, but with as many nails, for as there are evil works of souls. I unite myself to your passion and, to comfort you, I offer you all the holy works and courage of the martyrs who gave their blood and life for love of you. In a word, O oh my Jesus, I intend to offer you all good works in order to remove from you the many nails of all the evil works. O oh Jesus, I kiss your most sacred feet, always untiring in search of souls. In them you enclose all the steps of souls, but you feel many of them run away and you wish 
to stop them, which with each evil step of theirs you feel a nail driven into you, and you intend to use these very nails to nail them to you by way of your love. The pain you feel and the effort you make to nail them to your love is so intense and overwhelming that you tremble from head to toe. My God and my love, I unite myself to your passion and, to comfort you, I offer you the steps of all faithful souls who expose their own lives to save souls. O oh Jesus, I kiss your heart. You continue to agonize, not for what the Jews will make you suffer, but for the pain all the offences of souls cause you. In these hours you want to give primacy to love. Second, you wish to expiate all sins, offer reparation, glorify the Father and appease the divine justice. Third, you offer yourself for the Jews and in so doing you reveal that the passion the Jews will make you suffer is nothing but the representation of the double most bitter passion which love and sin make you suffer. And this is why I see holy consecrated, holy concentrated in your heart the lance of love and the lance of sin. I see that you await the third lance, the lance of the Jews. Your heart, stifled in its love, suffers violent convulsions, impatient yearnings of love, desires that consume you and inflamed your heartbeats that seek to give life to every heart. And it is exactly here in your heart that you feel all the sorrows souls cause you. Such souls, with their evil desires, disordered affections and profane heartbeats, instead of desiring your love, seek out other inordinate loves. Jesus, how much you suffer. I see you faint submerged by waves of our iniquities. I unite myself to your passion and seek to comfort the bitterness of your heart, thrice pierced, by offering you the eternal sweetness and the sweetness and the sweetest love of our dear Mother Mary, as well as, well as those of all your truly beloved souls. And now, my Jesus, let my poor heart draw life from your heart, so that I may live only with your heart. In each offence you are to receive, let me be ever ready to offer you unceasing solace, comfort, reparation and acts of love. Reflections and Practices by Saint Hannibal de Francia In the second hour in Gethsemane, all sins from all times of the past, present and future present themselves before Jesus and he loads upon himself all these sins to give complete glory to the Father. So, Jesus Christ expiated prayed and experienced every human being's state of soul in his heart without ever ceasing to pray. Do we always pray in whatever state of soul we may be, whether we feel cold on the inside, a hardness of heart or tempted? Do we offer up in reparation to Jesus the pains of our souls to console him? Do we 
imitate Jesus completely by acknowledging that whatever discomforting mood we are in is sharing in Jesus' pain. We must place our discomforts around Jesus as a vicarious sharing in his own pain and offer him compassion and consolation. And if possible, we must say to him, You have suffered too much. Take up your rest as we will suffer in your place. Do we lose heart or do we remain at the feet of Jesus with courage, offering him everything we suffer so that Jesus may find his own humanity in us? Otherwise put, are we a reflection of Jesus' humanity for his glory? What did the humanity of Jesus do? It glorified the, his Father, expiated and pleased and pleaded for the salvation of souls. And do we enclose within ourselves these three mentioned intentions of Jesus in everything we do? So as to be able to say, we enclose within ourselves the complete humanity of Jesus Christ. In our moments of darkness, do we form the intention of making the light of truth shine in others? And when we pray with fervor, do we form the intention of melting the ice of many hearts hardened by sin? O oh my Jesus, in order to offer you compassion and consolation for the total exhaustion in which you find yourself, I rise up to heaven and make your divinity my own, and, placing it around you, I intend to shield you from all the offences of souls. I offer you your own beauty to shield you from the ugliness of sin. I offer you your own holiness to shield you from the horror of the sins of all these souls who are dead to grace and who make you experience repugnance. I offer you your own peace to shield you from the discords, rebelliousness and contentions of all souls. I offer you your own harmonies to shield your hearing from the waves of many evil voices. Beloved Jesus, I intend to offer you as many divine acts of reparation as there are offences that assault you and wish to give you death. I intend to give you life with your own acts. Then, O oh Jesus, I want to cast a wave of your divinity upon all souls, so that at your divine contact they may no longer dare to offend you. Only in this way, O oh Jesus, will I be able to offer you compassion for all the offences you receive from souls. O oh my Jesus, sweet life of mine, May my prayers and pains always rise to heaven so that the light of grace may reign upon all and absorb your own life in me. Thanksgiving after each hour. My beloved Jesus, you have called me in this hour of your passion to keep you company and I have come. With the most touching and eloquent words, I seem to hear you praying, offering reparation, suffering and pleading in anguish and sorrow for the salvation of souls. I tried to follow you in everything. Now I owe you my heartfelt thank you and I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat my thank you thousands and thousands of times. And I bless you 
for all that you have done and suffered for me and for everyone. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed. I thank you and I bless you for every breath, heartbeat and step. I thank you for all the words, glances, afflictions and affronts you lovingly endured. For everything you did, O oh Jesus, I offer you my thank you and I bless you. O oh, my dear Jesus, let my soul send forth a continuous flow of thanksgivings and blessings. May they draw down on all of us the flow of your blessings and graces. O oh, my sweet Jesus, press me to your heart and with your most sacred hands mark every particle of my being with your I bless you so that my being may send forth a continuous hymn of blessings 